us, those, these, and them guys, as well as countless creatures on Earth, breathe air. Which means that all of these breathers depend on oxygen to survive. That's why it's no exaggeration to say that oxygen is one of the driving forces of life on Earth. But would you believe it if I told you that our dear oxygen, giver of life, was the culprit behind a mass extermination of countless creatures in the very distant past? And what if I told you that oxygen played a big part in an all-too-famous hormone's origin story? To begin, we'll have to travel quite far back in time. About 3 billion years ago? Yeah, let's do this. Earth was a very different place 3 billion years ago. The oceans were full of iron, and the atmosphere was full of nitrogen, water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane gas. Unlike now, oxygen was almost nowhere to be found. So the Earth's first life forms, around 3.8 billion years ago, were microbes that could live without oxygen. The ocean was teeming with these little guys who broke down substances like iron sulfide and hydrogen sulfide without oxygen for energy, releasing carbon dioxide or hydrogen gas as a byproduct. To them, oxygen would have only been a nuisance. Then, 2.4 billion years ago, Earth's oceans welcomed a new type of microbe with a very different tactic. Photosynthetic bacteria, like cyanobacteria, that get energy from sunlight. These beings possess the amazing ability to create their own energy source, glucose, using only carbon dioxide, water, and light energy via the green pigment chlorophyll. In addition, haloarchaea, which photosynthesize using a purple pigment called bacteriorotoopsin rather than chlorophyll, also emerged during this period. Perhaps because of them, a time lapse of the Earth 2.4 billion years ago would reveal its oceans slowly turning green and purple. Anyway, the important thing here is that the appearance of these photosynthetic life forms kick-started a dramatic change in the biosphere because these photosynthetic bacteria started releasing oxygen as a byproduct. In the beginning, it was merely a rumble in the distance. But as the number of oxygen molecules grew into the tens, hundreds, thousands, and trillions, the oceans were packed with oxygen gases. Evidence of oxygen's rapid increase at the time remains to this day. This is called a banded iron formation. Do you see the red bands there? Those are traces of red iron oxide formed when the oxygen produced by photosynthetic bacteria reacted with the iron in the sea 2.4 billion years ago. Professor Heinrich Holland of Harvard University made this discovery back in 2006 by analyzing various Earth strata, finding that oxygen was gradually increasing 2.4 billion years ago. Scientists have since called this the Great Oxygenation Event. This rapid increase in oxygen was a game changer for life on Earth. For anaerobic microbes who appeared before the flood of oxygen, this was essentially an ocean-wide extinction event. With so much oxygen floating around, some bacteria would end up with too many active oxygen molecules in their bodies. Such molecules as oxygen ions and hydrogen peroxide could kill the microbes. The empty space left by anaerobic microorganisms was occupied by various aerobic microorganisms that use oxygen, including photosynthetic bacteria. Now, wait a minute, isn't something a little odd? If active oxygen destroys cells, wouldn't it also have been harmful to aerobic microorganisms like photosynthetic bacteria? How did they survive? Surprisingly, the answer has to do with melatonin. With so much oxygen around, some aerobic microorganisms began developing systems to remove active oxygen from their bodies. And the substance that made these systems possible, melatonin. Uh, that melatonin? Yep, melatonin, the hormone that helps us go to sleep, was actually developed on Earth more than 2 billion years ago. So, while melatonin is associated with sleep, its primary role is an antioxidant. Fast forwarding really far to 2019, Chinese biologist Dr. Dig Zhao published a study on the evolution of melatonin. In his paper, he showed that melatonin is found in most life on Earth 
and that its chemical structure has remained unchanged for billions of years. Looking at this diagram from his paper, we can see that melatonin emerged along with photosynthetic bacteria around the time of the Great Oxygenation event. Initially, it was used to remove harmful oxygen, but as life evolved and grew more diverse, melatonin played a variety of roles in growth, immunity, circadian rhythms, and yes, sleep. However, photosynthesizing bacteria soon faced another self-induced crisis because of the oxygen they produced. This time, something more unexpected, an ice age. All of that photosynthesis had reduced the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, one of the planet's greenhouse gases and oxygen can react with the methane in the atmosphere as well, yet another greenhouse gas. With this reduction in greenhouse gases, the Earth was plunged into its first ever ice age. In 1992, American geologist Joseph Kershivink published a paper coining the phrase Snowball Earth to describe the frozen planet. He also proposed that the ice age that began 2.4 billion years ago lasted nearly 300 million years. The Ice Age lasted so long that many of Earth's microbes, including the photosynthetic bacteria, weren't able to make it through. So should this event be categorized as a new mass extinction level event? In 2019, researchers Malcolm Hodgeskiss and Crawford, who studied the timing of the Great Oxygenation event, had the following to say about this chain of events. We don't know which species actually went extinct at the time, so we can't call it a mass extinction. But we do know that life on Earth was drastically reduced, and that the Great Oxygenation event is a very important event in the Earth's history that rivals the extinction of the dinosaurs. Um, excuse me? Wait a second, so how does this story end then? Well, for now, let's just say it was a happy ending. The microbes that were lucky enough to survive the Great Oxygenation event and Ice Age emerged into a paradise. The abundance of oxygen dramatically increased the efficiency of their energy production, and oxygen filling the atmosphere formed the ozone layer, shielding life from deadly UV rays. The stage was set for life to take its first steps onto land. Of course, it would take more than a billion years for this to happen. And many, many years later, 420 million years ago, during the Silurian period of the Paleozoic era, plant groups began to colonize the land for the first time, producing even more oxygen and thickening the ozone layer. This thicker ozone layer set the stage for animals to begin their pioneering of the surface. That very first step made by an animal made onto land was a giant leap for life here on Earth. Of course, plenty of challenges still await them on their journey. So, how was the story of the Great Oxygenation event which led to a mass extinction, the creation of the first hormone, and life's subsequent advancement onto land? Maybe the oxygen you're breathing now feels just a little bit different. Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.